Welcome back to Hard West. Uh, this is um, our scenario number three, and the shootout number three. We're at the Devil Banner's Mine. The mine looked abandoned, but Cervantes knew it was a secret for the base for the Order. According to the letter, the clairvoyant and his prisoner will still, uh, were still there. Cervantes felt uneasy, worried that it might be a trap. Still, it was their only lead. The letter helped them to plan their attack. They could strike when fewer men were in the compound or wait until uh, the arrival of a convoy when there would be more men, but they could use the wagons as cover. I think we're just attacking when there are a lower number of men. So just to remind where we are, we have Gabriel de Cervantes, um, douchebag, royal douchebag, and a pain in the ass who's uh, uh, searching Solomon, our former um, player character. And there, he had been tipped off to go to this old abandoned mine. Let's see what they have in, uh, in store for us. Indeed, the abandoned mine was not so abandoned. As they reached the compound, they instantly saw armed men. They suspected their new friend was locked up in the shed. Rescue your mysterious ally, ally and kill all of the enemies. So we're seeing one, two, and uh, two buckets are here. That's not bad because we can use them for shots. There's another one right here. Okay, there's a long, 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 long hallway back, all the way back here. But I think, by just looking at it, like this here is full cover. This is full cover, this is full cover. This is full cover. Gosh, we're having so much full cover. Like we can easily just take an open fight with them. All right. So I suppose someone is uh, saving that girl. Whilst the others are setting up for Doomsday. We do have our sniper here. It's going to take the main grunt or brunt of the attack. Is this here a door? Oh look at you! I guess still the same question, is this here a door? The answer is obviously no, otherwise I could have clicked it. I like the idea with the transfusion and putting her into full cover. As long as she's not being flanked, uh, she can definitely stay here and bait all day long. So, as far as I'm concerned, we are ready. Let's use a prayer. Increasing our legs. Okay, that's not what we wanted. I think he's... yeah, he has a high movement now. That's all good, but I would have preferred increased aim. It is what it is, though. Let us start by picking off these enemies. Okay, perfect. So, number one, we're starting with uh, the five hit points. There we go. 
combat just started. We're switching to the weapon. I like these dual fire guns because you can switch to a strong gun afterwards and even take a normal shot. That almost feels like cheating, like he just dealt 13 points of damage. Did we just miss him twice? Seriously? Wow. Interesting, so the first enemies arrived. They somehow decide to stand in the open and take shots from there. I mean, that's okay for me. That's one down. She has her Volcano Pistol. I think I still think that's the better choice than uh, fan shotting. Six damage straight up in in the enemy's face. That's pretty good. Um, Gabriel reloads, and I think this gentleman will soon uh, rejoin us. So apparently our ricochet has no way to bounce off of the other the other items. Yeah, I think it's hidden behind this uh, behind this uh, cover, which means we probably need to stand here in order to use it, and that's too far to the front. Let's reload and call it a day. Pretty sure the enemies will will come in our direction. Yeah. They almost always do that. Oh, look at you. We just found yet another enemy. There we go. One more down. I think we will just take one shot on this guy. Pretty sure the I'm pretty sure the enemy is still behind that wall. Moving up just a bit. All right, we're moving up further. This guy unfortunately is in full cover, so there's only so much I can do. No way to access him from here, that's the only way really through that terrain.
We're reloading the gun. And let's use our revolver because that deals more damage in cover. There we go. We're just softening him up. He either changes, uh, changes his cover soon or he's going to take some more damage. Interesting. So it's a two on one, three on one. Well, guess what? We're going to activate dodge. And let's see who is uh, going to win this standoff. Time to switch up our health bars a little bit. Transfusion is such a nasty skill. Kill this guy. Wonderful. Only three more enemies remaining. Let's reload. We are again reloading. Actually, we're reloading twice. Now we can save her. They discovered a young woman, undoubtedly the author of the letter. She agreed to join their cause. Oh, nice. She has the smallest weapon in the whole game. And no special skills. Thank you for joining us, Cassandra. Much appreciated. Time to move from full cover to full cover. And slowly but surely we're going to move in. This here is an excellent cover position. It's covering against two sides. Plus it spots out enemies like him. Oh my gosh, we failed to hit him.
he will move into here and take a shot from this angle which we need to prevent I knew it. Wow, seven damage, seriously? All right, we just gained f uh, full health again with our nun. And killed this guy. I think we're still fine. Am I chucking a healing elixir? Probably not. We're at almost 100 um, luck. He's not going to be hit again. his gun and let's see if we can hit him there we go two extra damage Reload and let's take a shot. It's almost down. Again, taking away some of uh, his luck. Our next shot should uh, probably kill him. Okay, one more enemy left. Not really sure where the last enemy is, but I'm pretty sure we're find uh, we're going to find out really, really soon because there aren't many places left on this map. Okay. Uh, let's put her back here. We've just spotted out where the last gentleman is hiding.
No, we're not going to give up any luck because I don't want to be shot. I think he's up here. So moving to here will at least give us some line of sight. And we do have dodge activated. Okay, I'll just leave her completely out of the picture and I don't want to risk him as well. There we go, we dodged. And I think this is it. Well, not completely, but almost. This is it. Every member of the order had been dispatched. Now, they only needed to cut the cipher piece from the clairvoyant's still warm corpse. Gotcha! Solomon Delaire had done well to acquire the meteor and contained its power, but what the devil Sandra wants, the devil gets. Help in bringing the order down. But first, she wished to collect her personal effects from the nearby village. The bartender recognizes Cassandra immediately, brightening when he saw her. Um, his pleasant mood did not seem to extend to the Inquisitor and his other companions. Cassandra recovered her things from a trunk behind the bar and handed Cervantes with a large bundle of cash and gratitude for her rescue. When they sat down and to talk, Cassandra revealed a great many secret chief amongst them that the members of the order were hiding among the natives to the south. When asked how she had become a prisoner of the order, she replied that she had been Solomon de Lair's personal assistant. He had accused her of disloyalty when she refused to have uh, a cipher piece embedded in her flesh. The posts were, uh, uh, the posts were uh, sympathetic to her story, having heard Isa's remarkable similar story. Cassandra complained of a sudden migraine. It has been a stressful time, she said, and often happened to her in such cases. She held her head like she was trying to keep her brain and uh, brain in and told Cervantes she needed to lie down. Perez concurred. They all needed a good night's sleep. Cervantes um, rented two rooms for the night and the party got some much needed shut eye. In the morning, Cassandra was gone, leaving only a note. In it, she begged for forgivingness uh, for her deception and forgot that she uh, and uh, to forget that she existed. She said she bore them no ill will. Cervantes, for his part, was furious. He now understood that Cassandra has been the clairvoyant all along. He threw the note in the fire and ordered Perez to hunt her down um, if it took the rest of his life. The lieutenant was surprised by the ferocity of Cervantes um, as well as the swiftness of his decision, but he knew what must be done and left immediately. Together, Cervantes and Aza continued the quest for the last piece of Cervantes the cipher. Cervantes wondered if sending Perez after Cassandra was the best course of action. Even so, why did the party split again? Grudge, but clairvoyant had to die. He and Sister Rosa would have to do without Perez's protection from now on. Dude, you just sent your sniper away. What 
the fuck. Gosh. This scenario is so strange. Well, we got the Ten of Hearts with the Golden Bullet, but we can't use it. Gosh. We are building her up to be kind of a tank and use the uh, transfusion as often as possible. And I think we're also giving her the regeneration ability just in case. So um, she now has eight hit points and should do reasonably well with uh, all of that extra help. She has 75 aim. I'm thinking about maybe... You know what? Just for a second. How about we let her be the sniper? Plus 15 aim. And let's give her some extra hit points. Either we give her the ability to exchange hit points with a, another character. I think we're going to give her that. Okay, so she's taking over the sniper role then. Which means she gets the revolver rifle and has 85 aim. And probably we'll need to go with a doomsday watch instead, just to deal more damage. Out of the, the village, they met a native man on his own, sitting in front of his tent with a melancholic look. When they hailed him, they discovered he spoke English fluently. Cervantes adopted his kind, uh, kindest manner and asked him about the worries. Dohosan told them the tale of the hoe. Whoa, rather. He doesn't tell them the tale of the hoe. Anyways, <laughs> Tohosam had befriended a family of farmers, some, were, uh, some of uh, the few that neither feared nor hated natives. His tribe, however, was horrified at this. They could not forgive him for befriending any of the race that has brought such suffering upon them. He had been shunned and expelled. Cervantes, ever the manipulator, knew he could exploit the man's sorrows to elicit secret from, uh, secrets from him. Hosan believed that uh, he accumulated enough money, he would be accepted among the white people. He also said that uh, he knew of several order members in the area and that he was aware of metal pieces in their flesh. He would not part with this information without gold in return. We're giving him the cash, baby, as always. Here we go. Sugar Daddy Cervantes moving to the trading post accusing Roger Matthews of smuggling goods to the Indians was all it took for the crowd to hang him from a pole still he did not succumb 
and hung there gasping for breath and flailing his limbs pitifully. Cervantes did not wait until he died to cut the cipher piece out of his body to the cheers of the bloodthirsty crowd. So they do have mandrake roots, which we could use a bit. I think that's pretty much it. The burial grounds were a large field uh, of graves with a magnificent uh, missile tree in the center. Isa was reluctant uh, to desecrate the graves, but Sly Cervantes convinced her that since they were uh, patron graves, uh, the normal rules did not apply. After several hours, they had dug up most of the graves, collecting many valuables in the process. Cervantes then dropped the locket in a slightly out of the way spot, um, as it has been accidentally dropped there. Cervantes asked the chief uh, Sengatagia and was granted an audience, and Tagaya listened patiently as the Inquisitor spun his tale. Cervantes told, uh, told him how he came up with Sentagia's tribesmen uh, desecrating native, uh, uh, native graves. Sertangia was enraged by the allegations and sent several men to inspect the burial grounds. When they returned, uh, they confirmed the, claim, uh, the claims of Cervantes Worse still, they found Gomda's pendant there. There could be little doubt that it has been his doing. Setayaga wanted to exile Gomda, but Cervantes convinced him to own the only true punishment for this heinous crime was immolation. Gomda remained proud uh, and solemn as he burned, staring at Cervantes in silence until his flesh was blackened and he saw no more. When the cipher piece fell from his belly, Cervantes said it had driven Gomner to commit the um, atro uh, atrocities. He picked it up and then recalled promising the natives he would destroy it for them. As he rode away, the natives thanked Cervantes with uh, prodigious uh, prostrations and gestures of respect. Well played, my friend. Well played. Cervantes uses his sweetest talk, including an assurance that he would be doing the God's, uh, God's work, which is meant to secure a spot in heaven. Heinzer interrupted him to name his prize, and we handed over the money. Heinzer finished his drink, slammed the glass on the bar, and accepted the deal. Did we just get a new party member? Oh, yeah, we got a new party member. And it's a non-essential character. Great. Someone who's expendable. We might still want to give him some cards. Just in case... He can do something useful. Bonus hit points help. And the face off helps. And you know what? I mean, probably the prayer helps as well. Yeah, that gives him more movement. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. Hmm. 
because with a high movement we can move him into positions where he is actually useful. There we go. He gets a weird monocle plus 10 aim. I will probably give him an extra damage, to be honest. Alright, good enough. We need the Smuggler's Cave. Trapper's Camp. Oh, there we go. There is the cave. Beyond the trapdoor, a tunnel led into the hill and opened into a smuggler's cave. The place was an underground market with several merchants. Let's look at the uh, wares first before we kill anyone. Well, good enough. Now we can kill someone. Using the information, they only killed the order member. Savantas asked the crowd in the cave if they were aware of the internal revenue services uh, service. When the indig uh, indignant hubbub died down, he said he was only asking because Jack Weinberg was known uh, was a known spy for the agency. Within seconds, Weinberg has, had been stabbed, clubbed to the head and shot. The Inquisitor mimed giving Weinberg's last rites as a pretense to retrieve the cipher piece from his dead body. One of the merchants approached Cervantes, introducing himself as a merchant of miracle potions, but only, but also one who could spot true visionary. He said he'd seen watching the Inquisitor and believed that he uh, that by joining forces with him he could gain more of just the corporal riches. He sought immortality. Cervantes assured him that. He was making the right choice and accepted him into pause. Okay, there's our fourth member. A random merchant joined us. And the random merchant has random merchant guns, as I was expecting. His aim is terrible, so we're giving him some extra aim and an elixir plus some more aim. Let's give him some cards, see what the merchant can do. He only has five hit points, that's a problem. Might want to give him some extra HP. Here's a bonus to defense, here's a bonus to sight, taking a shot at every target inside, and here's a luck bonus. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that that has solved his issue, he still has only 5 hit points, but sometimes life only deals you 5 hit points, you gotta deal with that. Savantes was one cipher piece short of his goal. He returned to Dohosan and in his uh, most intimidating voice demanded that the outcast reveal the final member of the order. Dohosan tried to resist but eventually he confessed. It was the shaman. He lived in isolation to the west of the village. Dohosan warned the inquisitor gravely though the man wielded formidable mystical powers. Rosan uh, hinted that uh, he was in the possession of a charm 
that would protect the wearer against the shaman's spiritual powers. He had uh, been hidden at nearby, said he was willing to sell it, and we're buying it. Greedily, Duhosan took the money and uh, told Cervantes where he would find the charm. It was hidden under a nearby rock. While the Inquisitor fetched the item, Duhosan packed up his belongings and set out to the northwest, his head lowered in shame. What kind of talisman did we just get? I'm wondering because mystical powers. I mean, we have mystical powers ourselves. Okay. The Shaman's Tent um, is exactly what we're going to see the next time um, in the next episode. If you liked what you've seen, please be so kind and leave a comment down below and give it a thumbs up. I absolutely love um, Hard West and I hope you enjoy it as well. See you in the next episode. Until then, bye bye.